Welcome to Talk and Spin. I'm your host, Mike Stone. The show is dedicated to spotlighting DJs in Toronto. Today, we got a very special guest, DJ Andre905. Thanks for having me. Yeah, brother. Appreciate it, Definitely, man. man. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. Good to finally meet you in person. Yeah, like, I we've th- known each other for years through, like, social media and mm-hmm. such, and it's good to finally uh, connect face-to-face. Yeah, man, definitely. Um, man, you've had a very, very interesting career. Yeah. And it's, like, you're not even, there's no signs of stopping. Like, no. you're at a good point at, at the moment, so we're going to take it back to the beginning. So, how how and where or when did you get the passion to become a DJ? Yeah, so it's, so it's actually funny. Um, so, um, before I even thought about DJing, I tried to rap, and, and like, I was horrible. Yeah. Tried to produce, that that wasn't working out. So, I guess, like, the natural thing was to uh, DJ. Um, and I had a friend who actually told me, Andre, you look like a DJ <laughs> for some reason, and that stuck with me. Yeah. And then I guess finally, like a few years after that, I ended up buying turntables, mm-hmm. uh, buying buying vinyl, and then kind of learning to to DJ that way. Okay. And then from there, kind of like I progressed into doing uh, radio shows like uh, Royalty Radio, and then just kind of like okay. started my career with Royalty Radio. I'm I'm gonna go for off my memory, anyways. Was it an an all Canadian based radio show? Because that's what I what I remember a lot about about it. Because you were one of the few radio shows at the time that was pushing Canadian content heavy. Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, it wasn't fully a hundred percent all Canadian, but we tried to push all. I mean, as much um, Canadian content and local artists from Toronto yeah. as possible. When I started that in two thousand seven, which yeah. was crazy. Because e- even then, like you know, we didn't really have the outlets that we kind of do now. There's at least more outlets to push. Uh, local artist music and then you know when we started that show that's kind of like was our mandate and two we just wanted to interview people from the city that were kind of doing their thing and maybe didn't get the spotlight or like the love and the shine that they deserved yeah um do you feel i guess in comparison till now because with your radio shows now and um vibe yeah do you feel like okay because you know you've interviewed lanes and you remember when john rivers was coming up yeah, etc correct, correct. Do you feel now that um, local artists now are, are able to get more shine quicker? Oh, yeah, yeah, way quicker. I mean, it's funny. We were just talking off here how yeah. a kid who's 18 years old can drop a song tomorrow. They can go viral overnight. Yeah. And literally, they can be bigger than artists from that generation will probably ever be yeah. off of one song. And, yeah. and we've seen that happen you yeah. know, in, the, in the past few years, right? So, I mean, there's obviously more outlets. And I think, too, is just like the young generation, like the young kids – are supporting their own, whether it's social media that's maybe helping push these artist songs. But kids nowadays will listen to all Toronto plays, to, to, to yeah. like a, all of Toronto playlists compared to, you know, when we were doing it 10, 15 years yeah. back, even in clubs, I could play like a one, two local songs and people would be like, turn that off. Like, that's crap. Yeah. <laughs> play, you know, play some like down south or yeah. like New York stuff, right? So it's like change. It's completely definitely, changed. definitely. Now, in terms of your brand, now, I'm not going to call your name, but your brand. Like, when I first heard about DJ Andre905, for me personally, I was like, okay, he's putting his area code in his name. This is odd. But not in a bad way. Yeah. More like, because no one ever really did that. Yeah. Right? Where where did this, because I want to combine this with the whole saga wave. Yeah. That kind of happened around the time you started radio, Royal Radio, even before that. Yeah. There was this generation of people from, not just Saga, but also Brampton, but specifically Saga. Yeah. What was in the water in Mississauga for you guys to come with this force? Yeah, you know what? In, in terms of the Saga wave, I think, like, it just kind of, I mean, it's just like growing up in Saga is different than growing up yeah. in maybe downtown Toronto or even in, like, other parts of the, uh, I guess, um, in, like, Etobicoke or even Scarborough. Yeah. And that because it's, like, suburbs, you know, there's, like, kind of, like, that that stereotype of, you know, we have we all live in big houses and we're rich and all. And that's not, ne- and the, and that's not necessarily, like, the case. So mm-hmm. I think when you're from Saga, you kind of have that chip on your shoulder. Like, I have things to prove. Mm-hmm. Same, like, how people from even Brampton do. Yeah. Right? So I think it's just kind of, like, that chip on the shoulder is, is what made artists work harder. Like, yeah. the guys like the J.D. Eras, the Devin Tracy's, the Redways, the John Rivers, Junior T, Rich K, like, Party Next Door. Like, we, I, like I can go on, right? Yeah. Um, and, I can, and I think that's like that kind of started the wave. But to kind of go back to how I even came up with yeah. 905, it's funny because, like, when I first started to, like, DJ or I said, okay, you know what? I, like, bought vinyl and turntables. I was like, okay what should my DJ name be? And first it was like DJ Andre, but I'm like, that sounds so plain. Yeah. 
So I was thinking, thinking, and literally one day I was on like my iPod, and I was listening to um, the song "Hey DJ" by Jean A. Yeah. And you know how on the iPods it would say like genre. Yeah. So the so the genre said '90s, but it said nine zero and S. <laughs> and then then they just clicked in my head. I'm like nine oh five. Yeah. I'm like I'm from the nine oh five. Why don't I just say Andre nine oh five? I want to support local music anyway. Yeah. So it just kind of like was an aha moment for me. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, I'm gonna say Andre nine oh five. And then that's kind of like yeah. how the, how like the whole name started. <clears throat> The thing about it, though, in retrospect now, after, like, that's why I say your brand, it's like, it was fitting because you you exemplify the whole 905, whether it's working with the Raptors, 905, all the stuff that you do at Celebration Square. Yeah. It's like, you are Saga, yeah, right? I, I've, obviously, there's people that came before. Yeah. And I'm not, well, big up Judgment Day, big up, even, yeah, I don't Judgment know if you Day. know about a song called The Diesels. They used to make mixtapes in the 90s. Okay, no, I'm not yeah, sure mix of but, Diesels, but... Well, anyways, there's a lot of people... Shout out to them, too. Yeah. Shout out to even guys like DJ Chris Styles. Like, yeah, big up Chris Styles. He's sick with it. Yeah, he's yeah. sick, man. He's yeah. a dope DJ. He's, like, one of, like, the first DJs when I was... Yeah. Like, I would, t- I would cop his mixtapes at flea markets, mm-hmm. and that inspired me to, like, hey, yeah. you know what? I want to really mm-hmm. get into this. Yeah. Um, when it comes to your influence, I know that you mentioned Ground Scratch and Baby You. Yeah. Outside of those three, anybody else? Oh, or? Yeah, I, I have yeah. a ton, yeah. Obviously, like, I think now, like, I look at guys like what Four Corners has done. Yeah, definitely. Um, even a guy like a Charlie B, what he's done. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's like so many, even guys like DJ Ritz, who's like a dope DJ, starting from scratch. Yep. Um, definitely them. And then even from the States, like, I'm seeing obviously guys like Kid Capri, what Jazzy Jeff has done. Yeah. And even on, like, a lower end guys like Diplo, what yeah. he's done, even like DJ Vice kind of like those guys inspire yeah. me because I feel like as much as like I also want to DJ I also want to be more of a artist and like think a producer and yeah. put out records more and yeah. kind of really explore that avenue yeah definitely that's definitely a point I wanted to get at and I'm going to get at it now because you brought it up the song wasn't me and I'm, I'm actually jumping ahead yeah but because you brought it up um how was the process with that record? Because I didn't even realize what it was until I actually listened to it. I'm like, okay, how did you guys clear the sample? <laughs> it's like, it's like, if you want to hear like the actual <laughs> truth, we haven't cleared the sample. So, you In know, time, Shaggy, I mean, shout out to Shaggy. Well, you know but, what? He might come afterwards. So, he might come afterwards. Yeah, right, hopefully so. it blows up. I, th- I think the record is phenomenal. No, I appreciate like, it. Honestly, like, the way you guys, like, I didn't even realize it was the actual sample until I listened to it and then see what you're talking about. I'm like, okay, this is dope. Like, yeah. you did a whole, like, a, so, something totally different. It didn't sound corny. Yeah, like, which is, yeah. like, what the goal was. Because yeah. even, it's funny, so, shout out to my homie Young Cake. So, we actually did, be Young Cake and um, this one artist, Primo from uh, EMG. Mm-hmm. We have a song called Best Life. And we were planning to drop that last year. Mm-hmm. But we were planning to shoot the video in, like, somewhere warm. like, uh, But then, obviously, COVID hit. Yeah. So, we were like, you know what, let's push that record off wait till like sh- shoot it in like the summertime maybe this year mm-hmm. so i was like you know i still want to drop something in 2020 um so i was thinking so I-, I just went on to youtube i was looking for beats and i found this beat the like was it me remake mm-hmm. so i contacted the producer bought the beat re- rearranged the beat um and then i was like cake and i sent it to cake and cake said hey why don't we get fab to jump on this i think fab could kill the hook yeah so then, literally, I booked a like um, thing, um, studio session. Yeah. Me, Fab, and Cake were there. We vibed out. I kind of had input on the track on yeah. certain things, and you know, we like shot the video after, like a few weeks after, and it just kind of came out exactly yeah. like, the way that we wanted. And, and even shout out to Young Cake for even the whole concept of the video because his whole concept was like, "Hey, Andre, I I, I know these two twin girls. Why don't we have the concept as th- this like two twins? And yeah. it, you know, and you think that the the twins are." cheating on two different guys but it's actually their twins yeah and they're dating separate guys <laughs> yeah yeah that's dope that's dope yeah that's um in terms of like even production now like since the success of that record what what, is, what do you have planned for yeah moving forward? yeah so i do have a new single that's good that's going to be coming out in july um that i co-produced that mm-hmm. i actually i made the uh uh, like strings and such yeah and uh, melody and like shout out to my homie rot from florida he just like destroy that beat with the 808s and the mm-hmm. bass. And um, so we have a single called Papercut featuring Little Honcho f- 
from Atlanta. Mm-hmm. So he's actually an upcoming artist from Atlanta. Um, so we're gonna be dropping like a video for that, and like the single is gonna be dropping on social me- on mm-hmm. platforms uh, July fifth. Okay. Um, and just be- even beyond that, just honestly working on like thing on production. Like I've been working with like a couple beat makers and like a producer sending out loops. Yeah. Because I've even realized in the production game, it's not like the DJ game where. To be successful, you kind of have to be successful on your own. Yeah. While in the production game, you can literally send someone a loop and they can, you know, do the rest of the beat and you can get, like, a platinum plaque of sending, like, an eight-bar loop. Yeah. So that's kind of, like, what, like, the mindset <coughs> that I've been on working with as many people as, like, possible songwriters, yeah. beat makers, and producers, and just kind of, like, getting this, the, like, stuff out to uh, different artists and, and such. Yeah, that's pretty dope, man. Because it's funny, like, when we talked about your beginnings, you like, in terms of production, like, I wasn't good at it. But yeah. now you're going right back to where you almost started, but yeah. at a higher level. Yeah. yeah, and just, you know, actually learning music theory and, like, studying this and actually trying to get better every mm-hmm. day. Like, during this pandemic, that's one thing I've been focusing on is mm-hmm. just making beats in, like, my studio. Just every day yeah. zoning in and honing in, spending two, three hours going on YouTube, learning, buying courses. Yeah. And just trying to get better every day yeah, is, like, definitely. is, like, the goal. Definitely. How did the whole 905 Raptors thing end up happening? Yeah, so that was literally, like, a couple, well, like, probably a few years in the making mm-hmm. in the sense that, um, shout out to my homie, Lincoln Bio. Um, so he he's a uh, DJ. So he's still DJ, well, he's still DJs for King of the Dot, and that's how me and him met. And basically, um, he ended up getting a job, I remember, at Real Sports. Okay. Which is owned by MLSE, which yeah. owns, like, the Leafs and this Raptors. Is, this is DJ Doctor? Yeah, DJ oh, Doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. quite DJ Doctor. Yeah. Now it's, now it's uh, Lincoln Bio. Yeah. Um, so basically, I remember when he first got the job at Real Sports, I gave him a crate, uh, sorry, I gave him, like, a hard drive full of my my songs and, like, uh, music because he needed to play more Top 40 there. Yeah. And then fast forward in 2015 when the Raptors 905 announced they were going to have a team. Actually, my homie Charlie B was like, Andre, you should be their DJ. Yeah. As a joke. And I was like, you know what? I should. So I was trying to look <laughs> into it. How, how am I going to reach out to them? Yeah. Then I realized, oh, he works for MLSE. Yeah. He can probably maybe connect me with the right people. Yeah. So I called him. He was a solid dude. Connected me with yeah. like the right person. I sent a mix, sent a bio. Yeah. Next thing I know, they offered me like a contract and yeah. since then they've been uh, bringing me back every season yeah that's really really dope like it's again the brand it fits perfectly and that's exactly what they said when, yeah. they, when they first offered it to me they were like Andre 905 Raptors 905 it just makes sense <laughs> it just makes sense right it's like who else who else yeah. who else are we yeah. gonna pick right so yeah man definitely it's been like the biggest blessing one of like the biggest blessings DJ wise because even too like when I play there it's like I, I have free reign. Yeah. You know, it's like I have certain songs I have to play during certain parts of the game. Yeah. But as long as it's not really sexually explicit lyrics or really, you know, yeah. drug influenced lyrics and really, you know, because I have to think about families that, yeah, that exactly. are coming there. Yeah. It's good. And like I've been lucky that I can play local artist music there. Yeah. Um, and I've been able to break local artist songs at these games. Yeah. So Definitely. that's like a blessing. Um, in terms of breaking artists, and we were talking earlier about the scene in general. Because I want to tie in your, not even, just your radio experience plus yeah. what you're doing now. The transition into Vibe 105 and what you're doing there now. Yeah. And just the history of you breaking artists. Because I know you for breaking artists and introducing people to new music. Yeah. What's your whole perspective on doing it now and with, with, the, um, with the, the avenues you have to do it with? Yeah, I mean, th- I think now I just have bigger platforms to, yeah. to like, do it at, right? Because with, like, Vibe, I mean, shout out to CFRE. Like, it was great, but CFRE didn't have the reach. Yeah. It was online. You couldn't really listen in your car. And, you know, online radio is not as – I mean, n- now it's, I guess, become bigger, but yeah. I didn't really have the reach then. Now with Vibe, we have a bigger reach. It's It can be heard throughout the GTA. Yeah. And their online presence is, like, quite strong. Yeah. So it's, like – and the the blessing at Vibe is that, I'm able to kind of pitch them records that they can put on rotation mm-hmm. and that they can play throughout the day. So, yeah. you know, like just so you can really get an artist popping like quickly, you know, yeah. and but just that and even playing at the for the Raptors 905 too. It's like I'm introducing someone's song to a whole new audience of music because mm-hmm. it's great to have your song played obviously on radio and in the club. But at a basketball game where you have people the ages of you have babies all the way up to people in their 80s showing up at at games that can become like a fan of your song. 
right? So you have like the a really wide range of people mm-hmm. that you can play music for, yeah. which is like a crazy thing. Definitely. I know we've joked online about artists not labeling their music and stuff like that. <laughs> um, I know hopefully some artists are watching this. Yeah. What, what would be the best way for them to approach you to have your, their, your, their music played? Um, I'd say just be professional and, you know, like I can understand people want to have all small talk, like, hi, how are you? How's your yeah. day? Which is cool. But at the end of the day, just get to your point sometimes yeah. and just be like, hey, um, I have a record I would love to send you. I have the DJ pack ready. Like, which is the clean, the dirty, instrumental, a cappella. Mm-hmm. If you can make an eight bar clean and dirty, that's perfect, if not cool. Yeah. Um, and I have like a bio, like a press kit, I'd like to send it to you. Cool. And But to be honest with you, because I get hit up so much, I almost feel like telling people, I'll find you. Yeah. If you're good enough, I will find you. <laughs> not, you know, you have to reach out to me and stuff. Yeah. Which, like, I get it and I understand. But a lot of times, I'll find you. Like, yeah. I'll hear of you. We know whether it's through like Stone or some yeah. other DJs, or I'll hear of you because, you know, like you're just popping, like yeah. your music's just 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 doing what it's what it's supposed to do. Yeah, right? definitely, definitely. Because I, I I find that a lot of artists they don't either know how to reach out to DJs, or they don't even know more than five to ten DJs in Toronto. No. So then I'll be like, hey, like, who did you send your music to? I'm like, I don't know any DJs. I'm like, how do you not know DJs in your own city? Yeah. Like, yeah. You're Another thing, to doing know. your do like yeah. your research, do your due um, diligence. And yeah. the thing is, like, okay, if it's like a bigger DJ, they're not gonna respond to your to your DM. I don't respond to all my DMs. Yeah. And I'm sure same with you. Yeah. Right. So it's just like, okay, the best thing what I recommend is find someone who that DJ follows, who's friends with, and maybe reach out to them and be like, hey, uh, you know, hey, like. You know, Mike Stone, I know you're friends with Andre. Can you maybe send him the song? I think he may like it. Yeah. And if and if Stone's sending it to me, I will listen. You know? Yeah. And like vice versa. And like that that's what works with a lot of us as uh DJs is that, you know, sometimes we won't listen to every single song that's in our email, but if it's like someone that's saying, Hey, can you just, you yeah. know, listen to this? I want your feedback, I'll listen. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Hmm. See, I don't know how to phrase this one. <laughs> <laughs> Because well, I'm gonna I'll put it out there like how I look at it anyways from my perspective and the generation that you came up with, mm-hmm. you guys have been part of a history that's almost definitely unmatched. I kind of like how I look at it anyways. It's like you guys are the I don't want to put it as the Drake generation. Yeah. But you guys are li- like you guys came up with Drake close to age, close to yeah, like everything like inspiration, ex- et cetera, right? Mm-hmm. How does it feel to be part of this history? Like, this is like maybe the second golden age of Toronto hip hop, or not even Toronto hip hop, GTA Canadian music. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's like a blessing to be a part of it, to be even be considered part of the the chapter. Um, I still feel I have much more to do and mm-hmm. accomplish, and to and, and like more people to help. Yeah. Um. So I mean, it's like a blessing, and uh, honestly, I should maybe sit back and reflect on it more, but yeah. because I have so many other things in my head yeah, to, yeah. to kind of like. Think about it and work on. It. I don't really think about it. Yeah. But it's like, it's like um, definitely like an honor to kind of see, like especially the artists like the Drake, the Tory Lanez, the Weeknd, just rise yeah. from, literally the ashes to become mega global stars. Like, if in 2007, if we would have had the same conversation, saying, "Hey, artist of the decade would be someone from <laughs> Canada, from Toronto, yeah. a Jewish." Half half black, half white guy from Toronto. <laughs> People would be laughing. People would be like, "You're stupid. You're crazy." That's never gonna and the happen. guy, th- and yeah. the guy that was an actor on Degrassi too, yeah. and has some of the biggest songs of of, of all time. Yeah. People would have thought, and someone like, and even like the weekend, like a guy from Scarborough, winning ten Billboard yeah. awards. A guy, you know, like a like a you know uh, an African guy from Scarborough. You, People would be like, "You're mad." You're, yeah. Like, but it just goes to show you the power of music and hard work. And yeah. Especially just coming like, from this market where. They'll tell us, well, we don't have uh, infrastructure. We don't have mm. the population. We yeah. don't have enough urban radio stations. We don't, we don't have, have the money. Everything yeah. we don't have. Yeah. But look what, we, what has look, happened. Look, 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 look at what we've produced. Yeah, with not having, so-called not having. Yeah, correct. So, so it's like, like I look at it and I'm just like, with you, a rich kid, Charlie Brown, just, that, and again, there's many more. Yeah, like, yeah, tons, whether they're DJs, the artists, whatever, like, that. this generation has, like, solidified what, the Toronto, what what it, when people look back and they think about Toronto, yeah. obviously you're gonna think about the '90s and Maestro and all these other guys. Correct. But this generation is the one. Like, if anyone surpasses it, 
then so be it. Yeah. But it's going to be very hard yeah, to Yeah, this it. generation now is like even like the young kids coming yeah. up and the young singers and songwriters yeah. and stuff. It's it's definitely dope. And I think if you're like an artist in this generation and you're talented, yeah. definitely is like now is the time to yeah. come out and release music because now is the time where all the eyes of the world we yeah. are on Toronto. Yeah. Right? Which so, it was so. always has been. It's just now it's like fixated. Cause yeah. people would look and come and see and and be like, oh well, you guys are kind of this, and you guys are kind of that. Like the only thing that's slowing us down right now is the violence in the music. Correct. But outside of that, talents there. Yeah, talents there. Yeah. The productions there. The engineering is there. We've always had incredible DJs in Toronto. Yeah. Um. So it's just like, you know, it's just not kind of us taking, just maybe elevating off the street nonsense into taking it to like big business and just taking yeah. it worldwide and and making music and making records, not just street anthems and whatever, yeah. which is cool. Like, making music that everyone can relate to. Yeah, definitely. Right? That's what it comes down to. Um, In terms of DJing, all right, in terms of, like, because you have a very, your resume is very nice when it comes to who you played with, DJ, I mean, artists you work with. What has been that overall experience been like? You mean, like, in terms of working with... Yeah, working with, whether it's Drake, Weekend, certain DJ. DJs that you worked um, with. It's, honestly, it's been, like, a blessing. I mean, yeah. for the most part, it's been good. Um, You know, like, I, mean, I can't say I really had, like, bad experiences yeah. and such, you know. I mean, like, as DJs, we, we've all had that experience of that uh, club promoter or club that doesn't pay us on time yeah. or <laughs> has cheated us or people that, like, every DJ has been cheated. Yeah. But, I mean, for the most part, it, it's been good. I mean, and the thing is, I try to learn from these people, too, yeah. right? Just from not even, like, from not only talking to them, but just yeah. kind of observing how they move, how they act. Yeah. How they act even online, how they act in person, how they carry themselves, yeah. right? And I try to apply that to, like, my life and be yeah. like, okay, yeah, you know what? I shouldn't be maybe saying that or I shouldn't be doing that. Yeah. And, you know, I should maybe act a certain way. Yeah. Just, you know, be be professional at, at all times and just be on, you know? Yeah. And trust me, you know, I, I, I type a lot of BS on, right? <laughs> but I like the fact that sometimes you come up my and your mic, man. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. but you don't even say what the fuck, but you're like, you, you know what I mean? I'm just yeah, like, yeah. And, and like, trust me, like, I know, like, we all have those yeah. days where we were just like, not even in our feelings, but we're yeah. just like pissed off. And you're like, yeah. man, I just want to say this and get yeah. this off my chest. And it's not that I'm pissed off. I'm just, sometimes I'm just joking. Like, no, and sometimes you're joking, right? But the thing is, and I've even yeah, realized yeah. too with like online or even texting yeah. some of these people, it can be misconstrued yeah, because exactly. people don't see your expression, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. You can be behind like a screen laughing as you're typing it, yeah. but someone could be like, "This guy's a complete, you know, <laughs> jerk and complete doofus," but yeah. you're actually just joking about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And trust me, and, and like because like I know your personality, yeah. like I know a, like a lot of the things you say is just for banter and like yeah. to like make people laugh. But the, so, but people can take things exactly, like the wrong way. Yeah, exactly. And people have taken have taken things I've said the wrong way, yeah. and I've interpreted things certain people exactly, have said the wrong exactly, way too, right? Exactly. So. You gotta be careful online. You gotta be careful online because yeah, yeah. you can get punched in the face yeah. faster than you yeah. <laughs> than, than, than you can say. You know, so in, in line with also you know experiences DJing, where where are, where what has been like some of your you know, your favorite moments? Favorite moments DJ? Yeah. Um, definitely, I think starting with the Raptors Line of Fire, that was yeah. definitely some incredible moments. Um, I think uh, DJing like the after parties for the OVO Fest when. Drake hosted them in 2014, mm-hmm. 2015. Yeah. Shout out to DJ Charlie B for having me open up for him. Yeah. Those were dope experiences. Because it's like, you know, when you're like, especially at that stage at where we were DJing at, at uh, you would see like the whole crowd. It was like an outdoor kind of like pool party venue. Mm-hmm. And you got to see the whole crowd and literally like the whole city came out that yeah. night. And kind of to be DJing and kind of setting the vibes, it was like a blessing. Yeah, and, definitely. And exciting, right? But I think probably like my top is DJing at Jurassic Park West when the Toronto Raptors won the NBA yeah, championship. Yeah, that must have been a rush, bro. It was, it was crazy because when the city reached out to me to, to, to DJ like the, the, like the games, I was like, I'm down 100%. Yeah. And what's funny is that before game one, they expected only 5,000 people yeah. to show up at Celebration Square and 30,000 showed up. Wow. So they weren't even prepared. Wow. They didn't have security <laughs> prepared. They didn't have like guardrails set up so anyone can walk on stage. Yeah. And it was crazy. So the after game two, they kind of got their, their act together. Yeah. But, and just like what was crazy is that people like that I hadn't spoken to in years from high school, elementary school were hitting yeah. me up saying, oh, I saw you on stage. Yeah. I saw you on TV and that's stuff. Sick. And like, that's sick. That's that sick. was just crazy. And like my favorite basketball team and 
to be there when they wanted to celebrate in front of your hometown, 30,000 yeah. people. Like, I don't know if I'll ever get that opportunity again yeah. to DJ in, in Mississauga in front of 30,000 people. Yeah. So that was, like, incredible. That's like, a, that, that, like, that's that was tough. super crazy. It's funny. Every time I seem to ask this question, no matter who the person is, like, even if they've been across the world, they always mention stuff in Toronto or Canada as their, their moments. Yeah. Which, again, like, with that alone, that's just, that's insane. Yeah, there's like just to, just to like be able like to witness the rappers winning, but to be on stage and thirty thousand people and have like the mayor and stuff and like like I mean it's and it's cool. Like I've done other events where I was able to DJ for um, Justin Trudeau, the yeah, prime minister, yeah, yeah. Uh, Doug Ford, and like a few other people, which is cool. But like that experience still was like just mind blowing and just like I can't like yeah. top that. In terms of the future, what do you see in the future for yourself? That scene, like you, like I said, you've seen it at a certain point when you were beginning, and now you're here. Yeah, and it's a it's a bright it's brighter now. But what do you see going forward? Um, Hopefully, past COVID, I don't know what the situation is gonna be, but yeah, I mean, I see honestly past COVID, I see yeah. you know what, like the scenes are gonna definitely grow and become bigger. I think you're gonna see more art- artists signed. I think you're gonna see more cross Canada tours for local artists that maybe can't travel to the states. Yeah. I think you're going to see more collaboration with Canada and the UK. Yeah. Especially, I think, Toronto, London. I think that's an untapped scene that yeah. a lot of people are going to be going over there for if they can't break into the U.S. Um, and I think for me personally, just more production. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, I can drop, you know, God willing, more singles. Yeah. Um, and just hopefully more DJ gigs, like, you know, definitely more touring and traveling. Because yeah. one thing is that one of the reasons I even drop singles and stuff is like, I want to, to like travel like I love yeah. Toronto which is great but I also want to travel and DJ yeah. outside you know yeah. like I've been able to DJ outside in, in Atlanta a couple times and in India out of all places yeah. twice right but I definitely want to kind of tour the world and, and see the world through like DJing so definitely definitely um, let people know where they can find you on social media etc yeah um, definitely add DJ Andre 905 on all social medias Instagram Twitter Facebook uh, Twitch as well DJ Andre 905 Definitely, yeah, hit me up, follow me, and yeah, man, let's uh, definitely get it in. Yeah, definitely, like, honestly, there's so much more we could talk about. Yeah. Definitely got to wrap it up. I Appreciate mean, it. like, this was a really dope conversation. I mean, Appreciate it. For, for the artists, when, once they hear this, hopefully they get activated. Because yeah. Because you dropped a lot of jewels about what they should be doing to move forward. And you're talking from experience as well. It's not like you're yeah. just an arrogant DJ telling, well, you got to do this. No, no, I put out records. Yeah, so I know, I know I, yeah. like now I can speak on this more, yeah. like how expensive yeah. it is. So and like what you have to do to be successful, yeah. or at least set up yourself to be in the, in a, in a good position. Yeah, definitely. And with that, we're gonna wrap up talking spin. It's, it was a blessing to have you on the show today, Appreciate brother. It. Thank you for having me, man. Mike, man. It was yeah, long, long, long overdue. Yeah, long overdue, long overdue brother. Long overdue. Okay, man. Peace. Appreciate. It.